I guess by now it should come as no surprise to any of you that I am and had been a huge Blackberry fan. I don't know, it's the geekiness of the QWERTY, the physical keyboard uh, that appeals to me or whether that it's a lost cause and I tend to be a sucker for the underdog. Whatever the case may be, I was pretty into Blackberries. Naturally, I was gunning for a flagship model. Sadly, in my earlier days, I wasn't able to get one. But now, though, I got this nice BlackBerry Bold 9000 for less than, I don't know, 3 euros or something like that. It doesn't come with a battery, but is in pretty much pristine aesthetical and um, functioning condition. So let's have a look at what this thing has to offer and what, what was all the hype about back then in 2008 when this thing was launched. So let's switch to a tabletop view and talk further about the construction. So even though I'm kind of geeking out right now because this has been one of my dream phones for a very long time. It's uh, pretty much a straightforward the Blackberry, you know, the whole shebang, the physical keyboard uh, thing, the, um, well, the business-oriented uh, protective email, uh, special OS uh, type of thing. So there's not really much going on here. The phone itself is actually exquisitely built. It has a surrounding uh, um, rim that is, well, it's metal feeling, but it might as well be uh, plated plastic for all I know. I can't really tell for sure, though it's very robust. Doesn't really creak all that much, but there, if you really go for it, you can hear some sort of um, well, uncomfortable noises. The back though is pretty special. This uh, uh, removable uh, cover is, well, it's uh, covered in genuine le leather, supposedly. It's pretty premium feeling and it does have a special uh, tactile sensation to it. Now there is still a physical latch releasing this cover which looks rather nice. They kept these premium touches, I guess Blackberry and RIM wanted to compete against Nokia's 8000 series, you know, they made the 8910 out of titanium a while back in about 2001 or 2003. They made the 88 8800 series, the 88 Sirocco, you know, they were special steel anodized bodies and so on. So I guess uh, Blackberry wanted to pursue this uh, understated, subdued luxury theme going on with this phone. Um, this is the inside of the phone, not much information, but just for the heck of it, I'll just show you what what you can read on this, on this label. There we go. There's a USB connector on the side right here, but it's not a micro USB, it's a mini USB. I have a cable somewhere around here, but I didn't bother attaching it because I didn't have any reason to do that. I could charge the battery separately. So there you have it. The jack port, some buttons on the side, I guess way back in the early 2000s. Having more buttons meant having a better phone. And I'm not just saying that ironically because I do tend to uh, rely pretty much uh, all the time on muscle memory and I kind of miss these, uh, uh, this myriad of buttons on phones. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but personally I prefer them. Now before we get on to the QWERTY um, keyboard, let's just uh, show you the battery. Let's just look at the battery. Here it is. It, th it is 
a lithium ion unit with 1500 milliamp power capacity. So a pretty capacious and reliable battery from BlackBerry. I have a SIM tray that's I have a I have a SIM card that I have attached to the phone. So let's just turn it on and see whether this thing actually still works because RIM announced they stopped offering support for their phones early in 2022. So I'm kind of curious if this thing still catches a signal and you are able to use it as a proper phone in 2022. Might just be tempted to switch to it for a couple of days just for the sake of nostalgia. So I inserted the battery and the thing is actually booting up though it might take some time for it to properly uh, start up. In the meantime I can tell you a bit of the, about this device. So it was launched in um, 2008. Um, it was a pretty important launch and in 2008, yes, there were smartphones and yeah, the physical keyboard was going the way of the dodo. But a lot of people thought way back then that uh, fully fledged uh, touch screen smartphones were really um, a bit too trendy, a bit too hip and lacking the sobriety and the dependence needed in a business environment. So Blackberry were, were still riding the wave pretty hard back then. So it's a really compact phone at 114 by 66 by 14 millimeters in dimensions. It weighs 133 grams, which is pretty okay-ish, I guess. I like the heft of it. I like it's a bit weightier than uh, my other Blackberry uh, 8520. Um, this one, by the way, feels very flimsy by comparison. Um, the, the operating system is naturally BlackBerry OS. So we have 128 megabytes of RAM with one gigabyte of storage, uh, 624 megahertz CPU, but I guess that's a single core. There's a main 2 megapixel camera on the back, though no autofocus, I suspect. We'll test that later on. But there is an LED flash, and you have wireless with Bluetooth and GPS connections. So, really a well equipped phone, and interestingly enough, I was requested to insert the PIN code for the SIM card, so maybe this thing actually can work as a usable phone. Let's try that out, shall we? Yep, this thing still functions. I will try to test it, see if this thing has working, uh, you know, speakers and microphones. Yeah, so the little Blackberry seems to be working just fine. Might just keep it as a backup phone. The only problem is uh, the uh, phone was pretty cheap at three euros, especially given its general condition. But really, I don't have a battery for it. That's pretty disconcerting. And um, well, it's a it's not a great start for a backup phone. But anyway, I will try to find one. There is no touchscreen to this phone. Uh, Blackberry were a bit reticent with touchscreen technology back in 20, 2008. <laughs> I don't know, that's just a lame joke. I don't really know why or what they did, how they invested in touchscreen technology. I know that later on they came out with some sort of storm models uh, which had touchscreen and also a physical keyboard with a slider mechanism. That's uh, before the BlackBerry Priv, the Android powered slider. So yeah, but I digress. But the th 
most interesting thing here is this pearlescent scroll uh, button type dealy. Most people don't like them because they uh, tend to accumulate grime and uh, debris and lint from your pockets and stop working, but essentially it's the same mechanism as you would find in a ball pointer mouse, you know, the pre-infrared uh, uh, sensor mice that you had on your PC. Now, the most alluring and uh, for me, this is just, I can't really believe how infatuated I was with this QWERTY keyboard, yet I sort of get why I felt that way. So here is a new email and I will try to write as I go along and speak. I will try to write as I go along with my speech. Let's see how correctly I have written this down. So I don't know what you think or how you feel uh, about this uh, QWERTY keyboard, but to me this result is actually quite astonishing. I'll tell you why. First of all, I haven't uh, gotten my hands on a BlackBerry and written a message on it for more than five years now. Secondly, I wear glasses now, so my eyesight, my close-up eyesight is not what it used to be back in uh, 2012 or 2013 when I was still using this thing or this technology rather. Thirdly, I'm filming over with my eyes over my camera because I don't have a great setup. Hence, I need to keep um, the phone under the lens to keep filming. But I also have to keep my microphone and my eyes um, pointed towards the uh, camera's LCD. So actually, I'm not looking at the screen directly as I am writing nor are my hands in a correct position yet. I have been able to write down this message with fairly uh, ease and uh, dexterity and any error I made was due to my misspelling and not my actual mechanical inputs that I sent to the keyboard. I always knew where the keys were instinctively. This is a trademark, a pattern of BlackBerry designed keyboards. You always knew where the keys were, like when you were using, uh, when you are using a laptop keyboard or a desktop keyboard. Ergonomics are top notch. So I turned on the camera for this uh, smartphone. I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, it's a uh, Pretty uh, obviously it's an obsolete unit at 2 megapixels. It doesn't really offer any performance. I'm even having a hard time trying to stabilize it. It's not worth mentioning really. What is worth mentioning is this screen which um, at 2.6 inches is not big but it's well laid out and it has this nice coloring to it. I guess the OS is responsible for this minimalistic bluish uh, black uh, kind of uh, feel to it. Um, I like the design. I like the screenshots. I like the uh, I, I like the screensaver. I like the desktop portrayal thing here. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this screen and I can tell you that um, sunlight uh, legibility was actually pretty good back then. 
It offers a 480 by 320 uh, pixel resolution, about 222 ppi, that's pixels per inch, so it's pretty much on par with what you would find on other devices back then. So that has been all for me on the BlackBerry 9000 Bolt, a bit of a luxury item from the Canadian smartphone manufacturer. Um, let's draw up some conclusions. So first of all, I was pretty impressed that this thing still functions in 2022. I might just be tempted to use it as a backup phone just in case I do need to make those odd phone calls and just get off the grid with a, with a, a more ancient design smartphone. Uh, is it a collectible item? Well, yes. In all honesty, this is a pretty rare device, especially one in such a good condition. So I guess the real market value for one of these would be between 50 and 100 euros. For an okay example, this one has minimal scuffs, wear and tear, but actually you cannot tell from a distance. So it's great because it's a daily driver and I can keep it as such in case I ever need it. I just have to get a battery and yeah, I'm good to go. But anyway, that's been it for me. And remember, I buy, own and hoard useless, obsolete and quirky tech stuff like this BlackBerry 9000 Bolt, so you don't have to. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.